in the massacre video where selection is the name of the game. Oh, 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 get out of my bar! Oh, 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 I got you. you. Son of a bitch! This one's like they double the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> Better because that's the only cartoon I watched growing up. Speed 2 Whoa. Cruise Control! In Little China! In Little China? Oh, I'm late. Fuck! Well, that was awesome. A hundred episodes. All right, well, now let's get to the, the episode. So today we're going to do crazy VHS covers. But first, a message from our sponsor. An alien creature has accidentally landed on Earth. He's lost, frightened, and he needs a friend, somebody just like you. His name is Mac, and you can call him at 1-900-9094-MAC. Be his friend and share his adventures. And if you call Mac now, he'll send you his poster for free. Ask your parents before you call. $2 first minute, 45 cents each additional minute. Mac and me, coming March 30th to your favorite video store. Call Mac now, 1-900-9094-MAC. He's waiting. All right, well, it is the 100th episode of rental reviews yeah yeah <laughs> and james we uh you know we, we had to go to the store which is kind of tough nowadays they didn't have a lot <laughs> but we put together what we could to you know really celebrate and decorate for this occasion i assume you did as well ah uh, yeah um well i i i planned a little for this episode but i didn't think so much about the 100th what's the balloon say is that it says congrats grad yeah, for grads that are allowed to graduate, uh -huh. you can do that. I got an over the hill one, cause you know, yeah, I don't, I don't think we're surviving this. And uh, Ninja Turtles, happy birthday! And I, I put a, a minion behind uh, Kieran, cause I know Kieran likes minions. Yeah, this show was conceived as like you know retro video store. And what's the first thing you see when you go into a video store? You look at all the covers, the artwork on the front of all the tapes. And back then, it was all about catching your eye. It was all about making the craziest cover, like these uh, these wizard video covers. They make these huge boxes when the tape is like only like half that size, just to catch your eye, to make you want to rent this. But today, we're going to look into some of the most interesting VHS or DVD covers that we, we've seen or off the top of our heads, whatever. Yeah, because the, the important thing about the video store back in the day is so many people were just releasing things to home video that you had to catch someone's eye. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that was to make an awesome cover, even if it really didn't have anything to do with the movie, if it was like yeah, much crazier, but. I was tricked many times. Me and yeah. my family were tricked many, many times by the video store. <laughs> yeah, and you know, we're gonna talk about crazy ones, bad ones, misleading or wrong ones, and some that just have great taglines. So first up, the crazy ones. So this is 2020 Texas Gladiators. Now that is crazy. See, I've been to Texas a few times. I was even in Texas briefly last year because I messed up my flights. Uh, and it didn't look anything like this. So it's it's shocking to know that Texas is going to turn into this this that year. That was because you yeah, went yeah. last year, Tony. That's because you went in 2019. You got to go to Texas in 2020 and see what... <laughs> right, right. But I mean, it still looked like it did in 2014. I can't believe in just a few months it changed to this. <laughs> You know, now the Wait. thing is, like, what's really funny is that I keep noticing more and more movies that take place in 2020. Because, I mean, it yeah. just seemed, you know, like, in all reality, it just seemed like a good date to, like, round something up. Like, oh, in the year 2020, this is going to happen. But nobody would imagine how crazy the year 2020 actually would be. That's the thing. Maybe they so, just meant that these guys have really perfect vision and they're Texas Gladiators. <laughs> so they have 2020 vision. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look at that. Look at that that weapon. He's got, like, some kind of, like, bazooka. Yeah, he's got that's a bazooka. His, that's, that, that's his blunderbuss. The other guy looks like he has a laser gun, but then he has a bandolier with, like, bullets. So I don't really know if that makes any sense. But he's got a mohawk and a, a, a rat tail or whatever that is. That, is that a yeah. rat tail or a ponytail or what? Also, is the one guy wearing a cowboy hat is that, or is that his yeah. hair? No, no that's, that's a, a cowboy, cowboy hat. hat. Okay, I thought it was his hair shaped into a cowboy what, hat. What's the tagline say? In the year 2020... 
uh, hordes of road warriors, so it's reminding you of road warriors, swarmed across our shattered world. It was a time in need of heroes. It was the time for 2020 Texas Gladiators. Oh, no, so it's not the year. It's saying that there's 2020 <laughs> Texas Gladiators. Else. And James, are you ever going to review a Raid 2020? <laughs> <laughs> I still keep getting requests for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the uninvi or uninvited. Um, yeah, I actually have the tape for this one here. I mean, this one, I think we even used it on the intro. Oh, um, yeah, this is the even if it sucks. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, this one, I mean, geez, I, I just can't get over it. It's a cat eating a cat. No, 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 no. Have you not seen the movie, James? I haven't, but I, how could it live up to that cover? Okay. They've been playing this on riff tracks a lot. The movie is about a mutant cat who vomits up another mutant cat that eats. So it's not eating a cat. Another scary cat is coming out of a scary cat's mouth. It's going this way as opposed to this way. Yes, yes. I like cats have nine lives. You only have one. Yeah. Wait, but if cats have nine lives and there's two cats, that's 18 lives. That is 18 lives, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the next one, uh, I think you picked Raiders of Death, but it's also known as Land of Doom. So I have both here. <laughs> so it's one of those, one of those movies that has two titles. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you look at this guy and, like, first of all, he's got a claw hand with a crossbow on it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Usually one, one or the other, you know, like one would be enough. It's like, I've seen masks where it's like, you know, the, the top half is covered, and then one's where it's the bottom half, one's where it's, it's like split down the middle. I mean, Fan of the Opera's had like at least two different yeah. types of masks. I've never seen one where it's like, okay, the, the top upper half um, in the corner is, is off, and then like this part of the face is uncovered. It's just like like un this undecided. It looks like it was made specifically to take a sword hit from that side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it. Oh, that looks great. This this mask makes no sense. The the the, the arm makes no sense, and the way he's holding it too is kind of like like the the way a cat kind of like just paws at you when it's his hand looks like a rake like yeah, a really yeah. menacing rake oh because the thumb is part of the... yeah because well, yeah. it's all like it's all like one thing and then he he is like he's pointing it down like and then like, you have <laughs> it you doesn't have, look at all intimidating you have red Sonya in the back yeah pretty much <laughs> and she has three seashell earrings it looks like <laughs> does she does she wipe her ass with yeah, the three with seashell the, earrings with their earrings. <laughs> Whoa! You're gonna go to America 3000? Yeah. Oh, from Canon! Of course. That, that's the oh, market yeah. quality, yeah. Canon. All right, you got a monster holding the American flag in one hand and a boombox in the other. <laughs> An outrageous post-nuke adventure. You know, when I read that real fast, I just thought it said puke adventure. <laughs> I, I seriously did too, actually. Oh my God, that looks, that looks great. I'd rent that. Yeah. I would 100% rent, rent America. I'd rent that for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, terrorize. Oh, so it's like terrorize, terror eyes. I like it. I like the woman's reaction to him. She's just like, eh, 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 eh. Wait, and this is the devil? It says, no more films, no more horror. What's a devil to do? I guess he's going to flirt with that blonde lady. Well, it is Hollywood after all. <laughs> like, the, what it totally makes is the sunglass move. Like, he's just, like, taking the act of taking off the sunglasses. <laughs> Uh, Manborg. Oh, 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 dude, Manborg. I love how the guy in the background's a nuke. <laughs> I mean, this one, I think this is a more modern movie. Um, but they they nailed it. I mean, they, they knew what they were going for. And this is just They like, made this movie in, like, a basement. Yeah, yeah, it reminds me of, like, Kung Fury or yeah. like, Turbo Kid. They, like, redid something. Mm. But it's based off a lot of things like this, which yeah. a few we're going to look at later, but I think... But yeah, Manborg's pretty cool, and yeah, it definitely, they definitely did really well with that. But now let's move on to some bad art. I mean, <laughs> kick or die, okay, the, the ultimate kick fighting machine. <laughs> and I like the guy's giant eye behind him. Oh my god. <laughs> kick or die, see I didn't know that the kickboxing genre was such a thing because if we go to the next one, we got Knight of the Kick Fighters. Oh, that looks great. Oh, oh he, my god, he's got he's got blades on his Knight shoes. Knight of the Kick Fighters, and it's like 
it's like someone's dad. <laughs> like he's got a belt on and his khakis and and knife shoes. What? And then I saw uh, Justin threw in an extra one. There's Richard Norton is back in Revenge of the Kick Fighter. The oh, kick that yeah. kills. The sequel of Night of the F Kick Fighter. Or is it <laughs> Are they different? I like how the background is just the title over and over and over again. Yeah. Well, first off, I'm going to just say this. Where where was Richard Norton to begin with? Because I didn't even know he left. <laughs> uh, second off, what did it, like, who is he getting revenge on? It's like someone he's like, he's like, this one guy, he kicked me. I'm going to fucking kick him back. <laughs> and also, do they not punch at all that they only kick? Well, they're just kick fighters, and it's the kick that kills. Like, I, this also has that um, that double <laughs> shot of promotional use only sticker and Goodwill ninety nine cents sticker. <laughs> you love seeing. So we go to the next one. Uh, um, oh, that's a classic, isn't it? Wolfman. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well, the Wolfman, but oh. this, this one. Look at this sleepy looking werewolf. Oh, so there, there's like the Wolfman, and this is like a Wolfman. And this yeah. is a superhero movie. <laughs> wolfman. Like they just woke this guy up right before they took the <laughs> or maybe, maybe he's like a Jewish <laughs> name. It's, it's Wolfman. Oh, Wolfman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so now we'll go into some covers that are just misleading or wrong. Destroyer. <laughs> so, so this movie, I've seen it. I've actually watched this movie. Yeah. That guy, you would think, is the main character. I mean, he has to be. I mean, look at that. Yeah. That guy shows up in the movie for like 10 minutes or something. Like, he's, I forget how much he really appears, but he's hes not in the movie very much. Wait, but but is he the destroyer? I, I guess, but he's, like, I mean, look at that. He's got like a, a jackhammer gun. And wait, wait, wait. <laughs> With a scope. Yeah, it's got a scope on it. Like, if you're using a jackhammer, how much? Like, I don't think you need a scope to aim. <laughs> you need a snipe scope. You need a snipe jackhammer. Wait, so so is that really, like, how jacked he is? Because it looks like they just stuck his head on somebody. On an action figure. I don't... Well, I mean, he is in the movie, but he's only in it for a little bit. 3,000 <laughs> volts so couldn't like kill him. It just gave him a buzz. I mean, yeah, exactly. Maybe that's not the title of the movie. They're just stating the fact that Lyle Alzado is the destroyer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the next one, Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, I love when oh. they do this. Oh, so, so they, Wait. They, 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 they make it seem like a full Jack Nicholson movie. Yeah. And that's not even Jack Nicholson from Little Shop of no. Horrors. No. <laughs> yeah, so this is the original Little Shop of Horrors, which I think might have even been Jack Nicholson's first movie. He's in one scene, and he's young. He's really young in, in this movie. Three and a half stars, Leonard Maltin. Yeah, yeah, well, that's... See, okay, there's a lot going on here. Like, yeah, there's the, the, the Leonard Maltin review. I mean, first of all, the fact that he gave... Little Shop Bar is three and a half stars, but that they put it on the cover, because you know, usually they only put it on the cover when it's like, when it's four stars. Yeah. But they're like, hey, three and a half stars, Leonard Maltin. Like, it's not perfect, but he gave it like a really good rating. I mean, then they use an older picture of Jack Nicholson, and then they use a picture of the, 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 the plant, uh, Aubrey, from the remake, from the musical <laughs> one. Yeah, it's not the the original one because I mean the original one it just had like a little you know yeah like public... I mean the, the the DVD cover is really bringing that essence of Roger Corman and I appreciate yeah. it. I mean it looks I... like it was bought on a table at a flea market. Yeah, wait, I love the bottom. It's like ellipses, a Roger Moore Corman classic. It seems like they were reluctant to say that, like a Roger Corman classic. <laughs> so then here's another one. Here we go. Um, Predator. <laughs> This isn't real. This it can't be real. No, it's got to be fake. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I don't. Oh, know. you know what? Look down there. It says Metro Cinema. It must be like a, a, like a, the loft or whatever had like an event. Uh, that's oh, that's funny God. though. That's funny though. <laughs> when I saw it, I was just like, wait a minute. <laughs> so this is a bootleg. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Now, uh, I can't really read that well, but I guess that, is that Ty? It's like, that's from yeah, Ty. Yeah, it looks like it's Ty. And it says Kirsten Dunst, so that's the fourth Kirsten Crow Dunst movie. Kirsten Dunst Eric, Eric Mabius. Yeah, so yeah, it's the... Because, oh. you know, a lot of these bootleg covers, they would just print something wrong, or or they would, you know, they didn't give a fuck, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, they sell these, um, there's, there's a store in, in the Chinatown in Philly called the China Bazaar. Yeah. And it's uh and they sell all stuff like this. I used to page through them and I wanted to buy some, but I was like, I don't even know if I have something this'll play in. Because a lot <laughs> of the times they're VCDs. 
Uh, yeah. They're not even DVDs or anything. Th this reminds me of those like Ugandan posters. Yeah. yeah. Which I'm glad I've been able to see in real life. But yeah. why, why the Heath Ledger Joker? There's so many pictures of the crow. It's not like it's hard to find a picture of the crow. <laughs> just to sell it, I, I don't know. I, I, maybe just to... I don't know, but but okay, but this next one, let's yeah. change this over. Sean Connery versus the cock. But it's like the Wait, scorpion king. It's a sc <laughs> I, you know, I the, the rocks. What even movie is this supposed to be? Forty-eight I, in one. I guess it's forty-eight movies in one. <laughs> it's the Rock and Scorpion King. Sean Connery versus the cock. Guys, guys I don't remember helicopters of the Scorpion King. <laughs> yeah. I have no explanation. I, I have no theory. I have. I really don't know. Please, we need to find this and we need to watch it. I need to know. I just. So, I don't care if it's like whatever, but I no, need to know it, what it, is it's, on. It's this. like one of those like forty and one video games where it's just a bunch of random shit. But yeah. but Sean Connery versus the cock. This might have like, been licensed. I don't know. <laughs> Sean Connery needs to come out of retirement and he needs to make this movie with Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Well, so those were some misleading or wrong uh, covers. But now we're going to go into great taglines. I only have a couple of them here, but here's a mom. So the tagline is, call her mad, call her a monster, just make sure you call her once a week. <laughs> oh, From the producers of Men at Work, which is an amazing film. Speaking of that, I gotta call my mom, actually. After this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So wait, what's this other, you threw in uh, parents? What? Yeah, because it reminds me of just a movie with just a random name like mom or parents, just like a, na a pronoun or whatever, a noun. Um, <laughs> and I thought uh, parents with Randy Quaid was a real uh, interesting one. Because it's like, you think it's like a mild-mannered family and then it's like more evil or whatever, but yeah. mom's kind of like that. I like that she's like cool. Cool yeah. mom. Okay, the mutilator. The tagline is, by sword, by pick, by axe, by bye. <laughs> oh, and then there's just a few bonuses. There's Master Blaster. Oh. What? Oh my God! I like how the women's the woman's a gun. He's holding a woman as a gun. She's shooting out her feet. What is? What's up with his face, though? He's just like. Uh, it looks like a guy who goes paintball on it. <laughs> or like airsoft. Next time, uh, next time somebody talks about the NES game Blaster Master, say, "Well, have you ever heard of Master Blaster?" Maybe it's Master Blaster from uh, Mad Max. Mad Max. <laughs> And then w one more, uh, Friday's Curse. <laughs> it even has the Friday the 13th font. <laughs> Sw sweet dreams. That's meant to trick you. Yeah. yeah. That is so meant for you to go, oh, I don't, I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to rent it. Yeah. yeah, like that ever happens. <laughs> and, and then I saw there's also Death Spa. Yeah, the I've spa, seen Death Spa. The Spa of Death. Yep. You'll sweat blood. It should say blood, sweat, and fears. That <laughs> oh, would have been way better. What if better. it's like uh, the uncut, unedited version? They just give you all the raw footage that they filmed, <laughs> and that's it. It's like 20 tapes long. The first one I got, I got, I got less horror movies. I got Fingerboard Frenzy, which I actually have here, which is like about, I don't know, it's just these ugly characters, and they teach you how to... I don't know, a uh, fingerboard? Come, I like that it shows a real skateboarder and it's like, you're not gonna learn anything close to this. <laughs> yeah, and it's just these ugly, What's ugly... fingerboarding? It's like a type of skateboarding? Yeah, it would, there were these toys that were like miniature skateboards that you can like move around with your fingers. Like tech decks. They're literally yeah. what they sound like. They are finger skateboards. Uh, next up, we have Beanie Lover video, another 90s fad. Uh, <sighs> You know, I, I just love this because everyone thought these things are going to be so expensive and this was like yeah. a video just how, like sharing the love of it. I have one down there, had a spot like um, illegal Beanie Babies, like fake ones. <laughs> and this one shows like Beanie Baby conventions. I just think it's solid. This is the volume one collector's edition. Uh, Ooh. There, there's, there was not a volume two. Oh, I no. sold a couple Beanie Babies when I was a kid to my friend's dad. Uh, he paid me $150 for two Beanie Babies and then was all like, huh, 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 like, I really got him over on that one. And then they became worth nothing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we got Ho Legend of Hawaiian Slammers. This one is about Pogs. Oh, okay. It's a TV show. Oh, it's made by Deke. That Deke made about the history of Pogs and like different Hawaiian gods and stuff. Wait, wait, wait. What is, so this is about Pogs? Yes. What? What does this have to do with Pogs? So they, so Pogs were were originally, you know, they were like juice caps? Yeah. Because it stands for, uh, like, I think it's pineapple, orange, and, like, guava, guava or something, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. 
and uh, they're from Hawaii. Okay. And they, you know, they have to make a toy out of everything. And this yeah, is. Yeah, and they try making a TV show out of. Corporate uh, waste of imagination. <laughs> the legend of like, the Hawaii. I will say, <laughs> it looks awesome. Uh, they're just whipping fucking heavy ass metal coins at people's heads and shit. That's uh, what they do. Next up, we have Suburban Commando. And this is actually the case we have on the set. And I love this one because you have to. The, the, the case is. The, the, the art is stuck in the plastic case. You have to, like, hold it in a weird way. To oh, get it right, out. yeah. And it has the best Suburban Commando logo I've ever seen because it's like clip art. <laughs> oh my god, it's terrible. It looks like Microsoft Word art. Yeah, it's like the world and then like four buildings. Right right suburb, wrong planet. And it doesn't I, even make any sense. <laughs> I love Suburban Commando, but I just thought this cover was awesome. I don't know, I mean that that the pose is what does it for me. The the thumbs up with the uh that weird like I mean he almost looks like a cyborg in this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next, I have time traveling through the Bible with uh, <laughs> William Riker from Star Trek, and I don't really, you know, we is, don't, he, we, is we, he supposed to be Joseph or Jesus? I don't know who he's supposed to be. I don't know. We got Jonathan Frakes right there, and I, I just love this cover because I just got, I just saw it one day at like a store, and I was like, I didn't expect him to be on the time travel Bible. He, he yeah. looks like he doesn't expect to be on the cover of these. Like, oh my god, <laughs> time travel through the Bible. <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's like a hollow deck simulation. <laughs> uh, he looks like he just like like you just walked in on a you walked in on him on the toilet or something. <laughs> Much like we talked about earlier with Little Shop of Horrors, I love BMX bandits. She's like one of four in this movie, not even the main character, and they put her on the front. It'd be like putting River Phoenix on the front of Stand by Me and just him, <laughs> or grabbing I don't know uh, Sean Astin after uh, yeah. um, Lord of the Rings did well, and you put him on Goonies. <laughs> That's what they did here. Well, there's no BMX on the cover. That's Oh, no, no, there is a guy on a bike, but the the logo is covering oh, him I up. Oh, I couldn't even see yeah, it. Yeah, and he blends in with the Coke. <laughs> yeah, like, if, if from far away, if I was squinting, I'd be like, oh, is this eyes wide shut? Like, what is this? <laughs> um, and then next to follow BMX is Rad BMX, which I had always thought had the most extreme cover ever. And I've never seen this movie in pristine color. It's always washed out. Yep. It was always in the sun, or they just printed it washed out, but it, it always looks like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, next, we have Nuki, and Nuki's not a big deal. It's about a, a little boy, that uh, alien that crashes in the uh, like African savanna and hangs out with tribes. It's like a whole fucking awful movie. It's, it's like the most famous E.T. ripoff, right? Well, next Other to... Other than Mac and Next, next Mac, to Mac, Mac and Mac. Yeah, Mac. yeah. Nuki. Nuki doesn't matter. But in France, they released this cover as Nuki e Miko. <laughs> so Nuki... I, I, like, I was watching this French YouTuber and he had this and I was like, what the fuck is that? So how bad is Nuki that they had to pass it off as a Mac and me thing to make its reputation better. Yeah, I would yeah love how this do cover. they, like... Yeah, how, <laughs> and, and, and speaking of which, the Japanese Mac and me tape looks really awesome compared to the movie. And thank God, my, my friend uh, Matt Papa sent me this, uh, I'm gonna scan it. This one has the scene that's unedited where the little kid gets shot by the cop. Right, right. He gets shot, that's, that's why he's slumped over. He accidentally gets shot and that's why they open fire on the alien. Cause that confused us in the very first episode, the explosion happens and the kid falls back. Yeah. And we didn't know why, and it's because the deleted scene, he got shot in the spine. <laughs> and to fall back on another um, episode we've done, the Y2K episode, which has that amazing cover uh, that we talked about during the y <laughs> Y2K thing, yeah. uh, one of the actors actually emailed uh, James. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm going to call him, and I have all these questions about the movie and stuff, so I might try and do a Y2K movie follow-up eventually. But, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I got for that. Okay, um... So they released uh, they released Friday the Thirteenth on Blu-ray recently, and everyone was bitching that the cover featured a purple man with a chain, even though that's not in the movie. Okay. And and then the foreign release they had the purple man with the chain with Jason's mask, even though he's not in the movie. And everyone was complaining, but the Friday the Thirteenth has a very long history of misleading covers. Mm -hmm. So I have this original one here. Now this is this is just the cover of the the poster. Right. Friday the Thirteenth. But then they released it in the early 2000s. And at this point, everyone knows Mrs. Voorhees is the killer. They even show her on the back, spoiling. But the outline is just some guy. <laughs> some, And it's trying to do the outline from the original, but the original, you got like the cast and everything, and it's cool. And it's like, 
Well, outside of this outline is trees, and inside of the outline is more trees. Yeah. And it, it's not the right logo for Friday the 13th. It's terrible. It yeah, looks it's like the really logo. ugly. Yeah. It and looks then, like um, someone did a real low you know budget what? remake. It looks of like it. Friday the Biff. <laughs> it does. Biff. Friday the Biff. <laughs> the Biff. Wait, okay. so, so, what, so what's up with part five? What's okay, so part five, everyone knows now it's not actually Jason. It's a paramedic called Roy Burns. Mm -hmm. And he had a, I mean, all the Jason masks are different, but his was a little different. They had like blue chevrons that went yeah, the opposite the blue. way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's not Jason, but this cover wants to make you, it's trying to confuse you. It's like, not only is Jason not in this movie, Lord Humongous from Road Warrior is in this movie. <laughs> that right. is the Lord Humongous hockey mask. Hockey Just paint it white. Oh, paint it white. wow. I didn't yeah, know that. That's not from the movie. movie. I, I that like, mask shows up nowhere in the movie. I like thinking uh, the paramedic guy comes up like, just walk away. Yeah, yeah. Just walk away. I don't understand why they wouldn't just use the Jason mask from the... Why would they pick this as the cover? Yeah. And then they did it again. And Jason goes to hell. Like, look at this cover is awesome. Yeah. It's like on fire. He's got this chrome silver mask and then this demon worm weaving in and out. He never wears a silver mask in this. He's got like the, the standard mask that's all chopped up and ripped to shit. And the demon that shows up in the movie looks nothing like this awesome like chest burster worm thing. That reminds me of the ones that like attack Freddy in that one movie, like the, the demon. Yeah, yeah. Thing. So this like, it, it, they've always, always been misleading. So the Blu-ray, everyone's got to calm down. All right, so Godzilla versus Megalon. Everyone knows the World Trade Center cover, which you have there. Yep. I have this cover that I've never seen anywhere else. A friend gave this to me in the mid 2000s. Godzilla's not on the cover. It's Gigan and Megalon just staring at each other. And then it's got the worst description ever. Godzilla does battle with the powerful cockroach Megalon. It's like, okay, which one's the, like, it doesn't really look like a cockroach. <laughs> the powerful yeah, cockroach. Yeah, and then you throw, in the back, they put Godzilla yeah. and Jet Jaguar on the back. Is like, he... the two most memorable things in this movie. And and the, here's the thing that really bothers me. The back says, cinema greats. Godzilla versus Megalon should never be joined with the words cinema and great. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it's one of my favorite Godzilla movies, but it is not a good Godzilla movie. Gotcha. And then lastly, this one just boggles my mind. We all know the Scarface, uh, we all know the Scarface poster, right? Yeah. Black and white, Al Pacino. So they remade Carrie for TV in the early 2000s. Stephen King, he was having a lot of his movies remade and they released it on VHS. And what's gonna sell your movie about a uh, psychic girl who kills her high school friends? Make it look like the Colombian or the Cuban drug lord movie. Why Why did they try to rip off the Scarface movie? These movies couldn't be more different. Yeah, it's weird. So I don't understand why they want to carry to resemble Scarface. And th those high school students weren't her friends. In fact, they weren't his friends either. So I think it's a movie about your friends turning your back on you after you unlock your true potential. I, you know yeah. what? You got it. You got it. <laughs> you nailed it. So those were some of my choices. They were more misleading covers than they were crazy. Not bad. Uh, uh, Kieran, I bet you have a ton of things to show us. What do you got? I have two. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start with, uh, actually, I'm going to start with Rotor, I guess. Oh, okay. Because technically this is a misleading cover um, because it's got this actually cool looking robot on it. Yeah. And he's holding a gun and it looks like they're in this like post-apocalyptic world. There's, there's people standing at the cliff. He's on a flaming motorcycle, but none of this happens at all. Nothing even close. Rotor is a middle-aged man with a mustache yeah. right. throughout most of the movie. So I just thought this was kind of interesting, but it looks awesome. And then you turn it in the back and you see the awful skeleton Rotor with his middle-aged mustache. And then like <laughs> the horrible scenes that no one cares yeah, about. Yeah, because uh, you guys talked about Rotor. Yeah, uh, yeah go yeah. back and check out our Rotor episode. Which, yeah, if you haven't seen Rotor, Sort of, let me tell you. <laughs> and then the other thing I have is actually, Tony, if you wouldn't mind oh, wait, hold on. It to me the, over the there. The VHS is right there. Oh, so, yeah. So a lot of people, um, you know, may have a copy of uh, The Little Mermaid at home. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's right here, the tape of Little Mermaid. This is the, uh, the fully restored special edition. Uh, but the original cover looks uh, like this. Uh, this is my, my sister got me this. <laughs> Uh, from a Goodwill, and uh, the reason why they changed it is because the guy who painted this drew a, a, a dick in the background. 
Uh, he That was a, a legendary cover, because I remember even back then hearing about yeah. it. Like, it was one of those things where it was like... <laughs> Some some people would go into video stores just to find that cover because yeah, they would like pull them. Like for a while, like it was actually tough to find these, and like it's you know the guy was uh, apparently from what I've heard he was a freelance artist because Disney would just hire artists to draw their covers and stuff, yeah. and he was feeling like being an asshole and he drew it, a fucking. Has that cock. ever been confirmed though, dude? It's a dick. And that's why they had to take it down. Like they, they uh, did. Is that or did the urban legend get so out of no, hand that Disney was tired of it? It's one of those things. It. People were like, "There's a dick in the background," and then they went, "No, oh yeah, that that totally." Well, that's like, like a the dick. people who take say take it off the the shelves. That's like people who say sex is in. It is. Lying. No, it's SFX. No, Super it's special sex. Effects. It's sex. <laughs> it's them going, "Fuck!" Someone found my there's, fucking there's, sex thing I put in the yeah, show. There's, it's there's, SFX. I swear. There, there's definitely like the uh, the nude scene in um the uh, aristocrats. Yeah. No, the, the yeah, there's a fucking the rescuers. So yeah, in the rescuers, there's a naked, there's legit a frame of a fucking naked lady. I I bet a you picture. Think, I bet you think there's a ghost in Three Men and the Baby too. There's and I don't think that. Well, <laughs> that that is weird. But I heard it was a cardboard cutout. Yeah. But there's seriously listen, in rescuers, listen. there is a naked lady. If if, if there's you're, if the you're guy gonna getting a boner in this movie, <laughs> if, 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 if you're gonna sit there and draw Ursula sixty thousand times, you're gonna put a dick in. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the, these artists were like, "Fuck this place! I'm drawing a dick in here," and they did it. They drew Jessica Rabbit's vagina. In 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 uh, what's it called? You're going off. I'm telling you, they this is a dick, and they did it on purpose. Because if I were hired to do this, oh, I would draw a dick so so hard. I would totally draw a dick. Yeah. Oh, and James because it's hilarious. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Yeah, yep. yeah. Ap apparently on the laser disc. I haven't checked though. I swear. I like how we showed like our ten movies or whatever, and you went on like a, a, a conspiracy theory rant about Walt Disney. Be, it's not conspiracy; it's angry artists who were like, "Yo, I'm gonna fucking put this." Kieran, in there, Kieran have you slipped in subliminal stuff in any cinematics stuff? <laughs> I'm trying to think if I might have. I didn't put dicks in anything, but I think I put little nods to stupid shit. <laughs> yeah, so that's nice. So I, I guess uh, the last thing I, I just want to breeze through these tapes is we mostly have like. You know, triple A movies here like A Knight's Tale and uh, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead and a lot of that stuff. Mm. Um, but our friend uh, Joel Escola, who actually did uh, my makeup in the Spawn episode as Clown yeah. from the Movie Dumpster podcast, he sent me a like a ton of pictures of tapes when I said we're doing something crazy, but I couldn't get my hands on them just because with everything yeah. going on nowadays. So, James, if you want to peruse that folder real quick, we'll just slide through them. Okay, so Shockwaves. Um, yeah. So, Shockwaves has uh, Peter Cushing in it, and it is about Nazis that die in a U-boat that are haunting ships above them, and that's what happens. And that cover looks like what it would be, but if, if you flip over, this is the other, the alternative cover, <laughs> because there's a woman from Baywatch in it. Yeah, that's pretty weird. It's like, it's like Peter Cushing is like watching her. It's, it's, it's creepy. Yeah. Uh, next we do have the, the uh, fat guy goes nutsoid. <laughs> I've never seen this, but I really want to. I mean, that does look like a fat guy going nutsoid. So <laughs> I like the, the, the haircut. It's like a, like this weird kind of like buzz cut kind of thing going on. Yeah. Oh, this one's great. Uh, <laughs> microwave massacre. <laughs> Microwave massacre. Push and you have to the start. woman's head inside a microwave that's on, and it's bleeding out of the microwave. But it's also uh, she's also screaming somehow, even though she does not have a body. <laughs> and then there's a, a thing that says "push to start," like it's an action figure. Is there like a thing to push on the the, the VHS? Like kind of like. You know how some tapes, I know I have one somewhere where they have like, or, like the Evil Dead Blu-ray, the book would scream, but that doesn't look like it. I think it's... No, I think this is the only button you're pressing is uh, stop and eject <laughs> on your VCR when you, <laughs> when you watch Microwave Massacre. Yeah, I, 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 I picked Anthony. I mean, uh, Joe, Joe sent me hundreds of movies in his collection, and I, I, yeah. I kind of picked through these ones. I liked it. I just liked it because it was called... Anthony. An isn't it, your name's Anthony, right? Tony? No, it's Antonio. It's not Anthony. It's never been Anthony. It Maybe never... that's the Italian version of Anthony. No, my dad's name is Anthony. Okay. I am Antonio. But yeah, that does. That is the worst title to put on that that movie. It looks like your dad. <laughs> the tagline's in German up there. That looks like my dad. It could be. That looks like a xenomorph, you asshole. <laughs> So an alien ripoff, well, call it Anthony. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna rip off Alien, at least 
call it like extra terrestrial or something, you know, like. I guess Willard was a movie about killer rats and that worked, but. Yeah, but that was about a guy. Anthony. Yeah, yes, I guess. <laughs> Unless Anthony's a guy that made this monster. Yeah. All right. Uh, All right so uh, next, <laughs> wow. Oh, Leprechaun. A very, yeah, this isn't Leprechaun the horror movie. It's a very lucky, uh, unlucky Leprechaun, which just happens to have oh, the same actor. I thought yeah. the woman's name on the top was Lisa Thor and Hill. <laughs> like her middle name is Thor, and it's like three names, but yeah. it's Thornhill. So Warwick Davis typecasted himself by being two different Leprechaun. Well. My theory is every Leprechaun movie is a different Leprechaun, so he's just played multiple oh, Leprechauns. Is that Warwick Davis? Yeah, that's Warwick Davis. I hate his green fingernails. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. H have any of you guys seen this movie? No. I am so glad he has this tape because I was looking for this. Anyway, okay, Boneyard. The cover shows this crazy monster poodle, right? If you watch the movie, that poodle does not show up until the last five minutes. It's it's a complete waste of time. Yeah. That would be like if the Ang Lee Hulk movie poster was just those mutant dogs that the oh, Hulk yeah. fought. <laughs> They're like in one scene. Yeah, it does look pretty great though. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those times where it's like, you know, you yeah. take one part of the movie, put it on the cover to, to sell it, and it, it worked because it tricked me into renting it one time and I was pretty pissed. Metamorphosis. Okay, and that's Tony. That's one of the worst covers I've ever seen. There's a guy getting stabbed in his eye. I will never watch that movie for as long as I live. Mm, that has a press here kind of thing too, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tony, you know when you go to like the eye doctor and then they puff your your eye full air. That's yeah. kind of what happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not not into it. Uh, all right. Ne next we have the Kindred. Uh, Anthony. Oh, oh wait. 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 Is it, is it, wait, so the Kindred is the, the Ameri- So it's called Anthony in Germany, but it's called the Kindred here. <laughs> okay. All right. This makes a little bit more sense. So Anthony isn't your typical bottle baby, but it looks like Baby Yoda, which I thought was good. <laughs> and and it's, it's creepy. So I guess that's the same movie. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> so it's Howard the Duck times a thousand. Wait, did someone try to cash in on Howard the fucking Duck? What is Marvel? <laughs> what is the name of this movie? Magic in the Mirror Foul Play? Like, I, I think Magic in the... Oh, wait. What's the tagline and what's the title? I have no idea. I'm Maybe guessing that is Foul the Play title. or is it all one title? Like, I don't know. It has this weird, creepy Return the Oz yeah. kind of vibe or Mom and Dad Save the Universe, like a weird kids movie. I don't like it. I don't like one thing about like this, this entire no. cover. <laughs> all right. Let's go to Mandroid. Oh, that's kind of like Manborg. Is it's that like Emilio Man Estevez? Yeah. Man and Machine are one Mandroid. They really wanted to do the part man, part cop, Robocop sort of thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I'm glad he could, uh, you know, get past his disability and become a Mandroid. <laughs> <laughs> is this, is Mandroid. this what James Cameron stole for Avatar? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you have the same copy. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Irresistible. Oh, my. Oh, is this the... The the Robert Palmer music. That's video? what it, it's yeah. So you like simply irresistible. Oh, but it's a little irresistible. <laughs> right. What is so, Zane? A, a little, <laughs> a little, a little irresistible. I I did research on this. It took some time. Uh, this is a pornographic film, <laughs> and it's about the music industry. But this scene doesn't happen in the movie, the the pornographic film at all. Oh, okay. oh my god. Trust me. Okay. Um, and Kieran, you've worked at a porn store. Nina Hartley's in this. Oh, okay. And, oh. and a bunch of other people. So I was like, oh, that's great. Wait. Oh, necromantic too. Necromantic too. Yeah, this is about a woman who likes to bang dead bodies. <laughs> I've, I've heard Thank of this. You, I've never seen it. I've just heard about it. I heard it's pretty but fucked. But that's just such a gruesome head cut off for like a cover. And that looks like a big clamshell black VHS. So that might be, is that newer or older? I can't tell. <laughs> it's got Simone Sporl in it or Sporl. You, you know what's funny? I, I watched someone's video recently on like why Bob Blockbuster got popular. And it's because they, they had like more safe selections for families. To set themselves even more apart, Blockbuster had a firm policy against renting adult films with the industry shifting to a more family market. 
The people of Dallas felt safe letting their kids roam the aisles without the worry of them seeing any inappropriate content like Debbie does Dallas. Could you imagine going to a video store and your kid's like, your kid sees Necromantic 2 yeah, and it's right. all skin, it's like I skin to death. <laughs> what happens if you walk through the store and your kid sees Crimson, the color of terror? <laughs> Man, there's so many disembodied fucking heads. Is on he these gonna things. like inject the head with a needle? Like, yeah, wait, is the blood keeping the head alive? Like, what's oh. going on? And that's a wizard videotape too. Wow. Uh, it seems pretty cool. I like, I like how the head is the O in the logo. Yeah. Mm. But it looks like one of the guys from Star Trek with the half. Yeah. yeah. The head already has a needle in it. Yeah. The next is uh, Doctor Alien. Uh, she has the cure for growing pains. I thought Doctor, it was a growing penis. Doctor Alien. So does she, does that does um uh, a Dolly part in there turn into the alien and then become a doctor, or is the doctor already an alien? <laughs> also, something about growing pains. So is this a pediatrician? Like, what's going on here? This is a Paramount movie, and that's also well, they by the way, it. it's not. Doc, yeah, but still, it's not Doctor Alien. It's Doctor Alien. Yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's an exclamation mark. Yeah. <laughs> No, but so Paramount distributed it. They looked at this and went, yeah, well, uh, we're going to sell you this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, I mean, just that face, that face of the alien is just priceless. This next one is very specific. Stuff <laughs> Stephanie in the incinerator. Stuff Stephanie in the incinerator. <laughs> I just love that he's kicking her with this big boot. It's like no, the Battletoads kicking her. Wait, hold on. So is she shoveling the remains of Stephanie? No, no. Or is she... she that's like a wedding no, cake. No, no, that's the top of her wedding cake. Oh! I know, and then it's a hard giant to foot is about to kick her right in the ass. Don't throw your love away. Burn it. So right. if, if people at home, if you're thinking of uh, breaking up with your girlfriend, don't take this movie's advice. And then uh, lastly, I want to stop on... Robo Vampire, which I think you have, James. The last one, I have it right here. Yep. I think Mike reviewed it at one point, too. I'm really intrigued by it. Yeah. I've never seen that much of the art, though. It, it Like, this image you sent me is showing more of the image. Like, this is actually really cropped. I, I, I think it's the DVD. Uh... Oh, okay. So and by the way, there is no character in this movie that looks it's kind of like Rotor where yeah. the character in the movie looks nothing like that but they they clearly just took a picture of RoboCop and to, he's he's strangling Lo Pan from Big Trouble in Little China it yeah. seems this these <laughs> these covers prey on like people who can't read or like kids yeah you know because a kid's gonna be like oh RoboCop yeah I'll buy this and then they watch and they're like what what's happening mom yeah this I don't movie know. Sucks. If I saw this, I would buy it immediately. <laughs> this would have gotten me as a kid. I'd be like, Robocop and vampires? Yeah! <laughs> yeah, so that's all I got from you. Thanks, Joe, for sending us those. And uh, check out Joe's podcast in the description. Ch check out the Pumpkinhead 2 episode. I'm the guest on that episode. It was oh. a very good one. <laughs> and let us know what you think are the craziest VHS covers you've ever seen. Yeah, and uh, oh, we got to say what the next episode is. Oh, yeah. I oh, we yeah, we don't know, do we? Yeah, you know what, let's talk about the next batch a after. Oh, trying to figure out your next episode, boys? Maybe I can be of assistance. <laughs> Mr. Lobo! Tis I, Mr. Lobo, in the flesh, so to speak, your regional manager. Oh no, he magically whisked away all our 100th episode decorations. And put new clothes on us, except for me. Wait, 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 I, I thought you were our landlord. Where did the regional manager thing come from? Is that new? Oh, right. We haven't done this bit in a while, have we? Nah, we kind of just did like six months of theme episodes and then forgot about the whole rental reviews cinematic universe. To be fair though, it lasted longer than the universal dark universe. <laughs> Yeah, plus your uh, landlord sash is like right here, so. Right, so I'm introducing next week's episode or not. Kind of busy over here, 129 days till Halloween, plenty to do. Uh, no, no, it, it's cool, Mr. Lobo, don't worry about it. We, we, we were talking about canceling rental reviews anyway, so this is probably the last episode. Oh, ending it? Like part of a skit or something? One of your little jokes? That sounds pretty serious. 
Now, we just did a uh, hundred reviews back to back covering different movies and different genres, and uh, we're a little burnt out. Yeah, and it's kind of hard getting all of us together with everything going on in the world right now, so kind of tough to film anyway. Yeah, and the fans kind of respond better to scripted stuff either way. Well, this crazy VHS episode probably could have been scripted. Kind of like the AB Gen one about bad game art, I think, came out. Oh, and the uh, the last Blockbuster episode wasn't scripted. People like that. Mm. Or the Halloween 6 video I did with James. I want to do more stuff like that. I guess that's true. It seems like rental reviews is a bit more like a podcast style anyway. That's a good idea, Kieran. Maybe we'll do some podcasts instead. Okay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Ryan has been working on a new Cinemassacre website recently too, so there's other places to put shit. Let's just say I'm a big fan of what Ryan's been working on. What were you boys talking about? I, I, I wasn't paying attention. Uh, yeah, so this is pretty much the last episode of Rental Reviews for the foreseeable future. And we're going to set up some podcast to work on and uh, some scripted stuff with James and Mike. Gotcha. Okay, it's been fun. I'm going to go back to making erroneous copyright claims on certain YouTube videos. <laughs> 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 okay. All right, well, let's come up with some ideas for some episodes. Does anyone want to see a tour of my Gengar collection? I already did a tour of your embarrassing Gengar collection in the Inspector Digimon episode. In I, th I think it's Detective Pikachu. Whatever. I do not have a line here. But yeah, we have about 100 episodes of this damn show, and we have a playlist, so you can go back and watch those whenever you want. So, pretty much, it's kind of like... I guess I started the idea of rental reviews, so I figured I should be the one to end it. Uh, now we can go on and do a bunch of other things that we're like passionate about, I guess, but you know, it's whatever. Um, I think we're gonna be doing some other shows. What the hell are we doing, Tony? Uh, retail reviews, AVGN, you know it's bullshit. Yeah, so those shows are still monthly. Retail reviews, AVGN, you know it's bullshit. Um, and what was the other thing, Kieran? We got a bunch of like one-off videos we're pretty happy about. Yeah, yeah, we want to do a bunch of stuff like that. A bunch of one-off content that I guess we're passionate about. But you know, we've been doing this thing for a while. Uh, how long? About two years. Yeah, so we've been doing this for about two years, and it's been fun. But you know, we're gonna go on and do some other stuff. So, thanks for watching Rental Reviews, I guess. From 1975 to 1980, Tony F. Hack the Movies fought 329 matches. He retired undefeated as the World Heavyweight Full Contact Kumite Champion. Kieran grew up and married Wendy Peppercorn. They have nine kids. They bought Vincent's Drugstore and they still own it to this day. Justin enrolled in the college courses, and although it was hard, he gutted it out like he always did. He went on to college and eventually became a lawyer. Last week, he entered a fast food restaurant. Just ahead of him, two men got into an argument. One of them pulled a knife. Justin, who would always make the best piece, tried to break it up. He was stabbed in the throat. He died almost instantly. James Rolfe never rose from the grave, but after selling 103 tapes, he is more famous than ever. Today, his store outsells blockbusters by a substantial margin. <laughs>